very painful issue for us. And what is necessary is uh, we need to defeat organized crime. Because the major threatness against journalists is exactly the major threatness against uh, a lot of citizens, which is organized crime. Once one journalist uh, write about a criminal or an operation of the criminals, uh, they, his, he or she suffered a lot this threatness of the criminals in Mexico. Now we establish, as you were saying, we are we propose to the Congress a bill in which any criminal against any crime against journalists would be considered federal crime. We are starting to apply new that's, that new legislation. The other is uh, preventive actions, but it is clear that that is not enough. Our uh, next step is to establish a personal protection for all those journalists that are running more risk in doing she or her duty, he or she, uh, him or her duty. And of course, that will imply a bigger step in the effort to defend them. Unfortunately, that is still a reality, and we need to overcome that, that problem. But I want to recall the attention that uh, it is necessary to defeat organized crime. Otherwise, they will take over our communities. The most important threat against freedom and liberty in the country is not different from the past, is not coming from, the, from an authoritarian government, is coming from the criminals. And we need to make a common from against them. The life of the journalist is another reason to persevere and be resilient in this fight against organized crime. And the reason is, all my opinion, that uh, the assault weapons ban expired in 2004, and the, con the Congress didn't ratify that. And since then, since 2004 and 5, there is a clear correlation between that moment of the expiration of the law and the moment of the beginning of the new spiral of violence in Mexico. Let me tell you these figures. Under my administration, we have seized 150,000 weapons in Mexico. And 85% of them were sold in a gun shop in the border. There are nine gun shops in the American side per each Walmart in the border with Mexico. So that is another factor. Is that the factor? I don't know, but clearly, Clearly, it's a, a factor. The criminals now are able to get access to this incredible power of fight. But that's another reason. Now, uh, comparing first semester of 2011 with first semester of, two, of 2012, we registered a decrease of almost 10% in the rate of homicide, by first time ever in probably eight or nine years. Now. Is this a systematic trend? Unfortunately, probably not. Because we are seeing that uh, the, the organizations are splitting today. Now, for instance, the Zetas are fighting each other inside the own organization. And that is, of course, a signal of a weakening process inside the organization. But at the same time, that is provoking a new battle. And you can imagine if uh, he and I are colleagues during several years, and one day we have a battle. I know where is his family, where are his allies, where, who are the policemen that he is bribing, so I can go directly in order to kill all his allies, in order to eliminate the, this part of the business. So that is probably the reason of this. Now, what could be the key? 
for the future. On my opinion, whoever could, will be the president of, and probably my sincere recommendation for president-elect will be, despite the drug regulation, if you want to see a, pros a prosperous nation, you need to enforce the law. And you need to put in place this strategy, probably with some different uh, uh, parts, but the main components are firing the criminals, building new law enforcement institutions, and building social fabric. And you need to persist on that. Now, the question is, as long we don't stop the incredible amount of money going every single year to the hands of the criminals, it will be almost impossible to end this story. We are talking about like 20, 30 billion dollars a year going to Mexican criminals every single year coming from the United States. So it is crucial to stem that flow of money. How? I don't know. The old recipe is reduce consumption and reduce demand for drugs. I agree with that, and I really encourage the American society to do that. However, you should analyze, is that possible? That is going to happen one day? If you are not able to reduce the consumption of drugs, at least stop the flow of money. I don't know how. but. It is important to analyze any alternative. You should come up with some kind of alternative for that. Either fighting laundry money, uh, establishing more severe controls. I don't know, uh, even explore market alternatives because it, is, it would be impossible to overcome the whole situation as long we are unable to stop the flow of money. That's more or less my idea.